hello welcome to the second video of plotting and understanding the pathograph if you missed the first video or you haven't watched the first video yet i've put a link on the top right corner of this video you can click the link to watch the first video the second section of the pathograph monitors the progress of the active phase of the first stage of labor and this includes cervical dilation that we see right here and the graph is telling us to plot with x and the descent of the presenting part or the head graph is telling us to plot with o and also includes the part where we plot for the effectiveness of uterine contraction we start to plot this part of the pathograph when we did vagina examination and realized that now cervical dilation is more than 4 cm or is equal to 4 cm so we only plot in this part of the pathograph only when cervical dilation is 4 centimeters or more so let's assume our patient came at 11 a.m. in the morning. We will record 11 a.m. right here. And the cervical dilation on vagina examination was 4 centimeters. Our first plot on the pathograph will be on the alert line. We plot it on the alert line right here. So we will plot 4 centimeters right here. Also, let's assume, let's say the patient came at 11 a.m., but the cervical dilation at the time the patient came was 5 cm. Then we will plot it right here. We will record our time 11 a.m. here and plot the 5 centimeters dilation that we examined on vagina examination right here. And it has to be on the alert line. Then we plot it here. Let us note, however, that the ideal time for, for doing vaginal examination and determining the cervical dilation of the woman in labor is done four hours apart. However, if due to your discretion as a midwife, a doctor, or the attending clinician, you think labor is too fast or labor is progressing too slow, you may decide to do vagina examination more frequent than the four hours okay and let's remember also that here we are measuring the active phase of the first stage of labor and in the active phase we want our cervical dilation to be about one centimeter dilation per hour okay and so that's how we want our cervical dilation to be so four hours from 11 a.m will be 3 p.m and that one let's say we checked and the cervical dilation and that time the patient came at 11 a.m the cervical dilation was five centimeters okay and now at 3 p.m the cervical dilation is nine we will plot it right here okay uh -huh. and we can see that it is along the alert line okay mm -hmm. so whenever we do our vagina examination okay we also have to check for the descent of the presenting part or the descent of the feet ahead because as the cervix is dilating for a normal labor the head has to also descend into the pelvis okay then we check how many of our fingers are able to feel the presenting part or the feet ahead if we do this and about three of our fingers felt the presenting part then descent is three we record it at the time that we did the examination okay so we record it right here on three okay if we do another one during another vaginal examination we did our vagina examination we determine the cervical dilation and we check the descent now descent is one 
we will plot it here against the time okay always we want our descent to come to zero so that we will know that the presenting part is in the pelvis and ready to come out of the vagina okay so let us look at this way too if our patient that came at 11 a.m and cervical dilation was five centimeters now at 3 p.m still cervical dilation was six centimeters you see we are on the action line going towards the action line which is bad for our patient it means labor is not progressing so we need to act fast by arranging for emergency cesarean section okay okay so after plotting that we connect our line from the first plot to the second we do same for the descent and we can see we have our line over here going as we want it now let's look at how to plot the contractions okay you try and contractions one of the key parameters we check for to ensure a good outcome of labor is uterine contractions okay and we do this by resting our palms gently on the fundus of the uterus and feel for the contractions and we want our contractions to be regular and also the rate of contractions should be about three to five contractions in every 10 minutes okay and the contraction should be strong for a contraction should to be strong the contraction has to last somewhere between 40 to 60 seconds okay so this contractions has to occur about three to five times in 10 minutes if we feel a contraction we count how many contractions did we feel in this first 10 minutes if it is four then you can see here contractions per 10 minutes we have one two three four and five okay so if we felt four contractions then we are going to take that in the first um the first column okay and that one should be up to the fourth box how long did that contraction last if it lasted less than 20 seconds we will use dot dot to indicate all the boxes from the fourth box to the first box below okay if it lasted somewhere between 20 seconds to 40 seconds we will use strokes of lines okay to indicate that we counted four contractions but it lasted for 40 seconds okay so we will use strokes of lines if the contraction was very strong and lasted more than 40 seconds to 60 seconds then we will shade totally the boxes the four boxes okay so the next 10 minutes also we check the contraction we counted five contractions in 10 minutes and each of the contractions lasted about 40 to 60 seconds you will shade in the second column all the boxes okay so if we check a contraction in 10 minutes we counted only two and lasted less than 20 seconds we will shade only two boxes in the column and that one we will use dot 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 okay we won't shade it totally if it lasted more than 20 seconds but less than 40 seconds we will use strokes as i am doing right here okay uh, and if it lasted each contraction lasted more than 40 seconds to 60 seconds then we will shade it totally okay and down here did we augment the labor how many units of oxytocin did we give and how was it running okay and how many liters of normal line was it running um, two drops per minute three drops per minute we indicate it here now let's consider the last part of the pathograph which talks about the maternal conditions let's note that in obstetrics we are caring for two patients the fetus and the mother in as much as 
we are more concerned about the labor we also have to concern ourselves with the health status of the mother is the mother strong enough to go through labor or the mother is deteriorating and so we have to halt labor and prepare for emergency cesarean section or we have to rehydrate the mother okay so all that is seen in the last part of the paragraph so here we can see the pulse and the bp of the mother so the pulse we are going to use a dot to indicate the pulse when we check the pulse every 30 minutes or an hour then we use a dot to indicate in the bp we check it about four hours apart okay and also the temperature anytime we check the temperature we record it here then as the woman is in labor we have to continuously check the urine how much volume of urine is the woman passing and the acetone in the urine indicating that the woman is becoming acidotic is the quantity of urine less than 30 mils per hour meaning that the woman is becoming dehydrated okay are there proteins in the urine all right so we check that and we record it here every hour we check the urine we record we check we record okay so now if we check the pulse let's say we checked for the woman's pulse the pulse was 90 you indicate here 90 okay 90 over here and when we check the bp the diastolic was 70 then we will record it here and if the systolic was let's say 120 record it here. then we join we join the diastolic to the systolic like this okay that's how we do it okay and so we will do that continuously we check the pulse continuously until the baby is out and until we monitor the mother even after the baby is out we monitor the mother for some time okay and also check for the temperature of the mother is the mother nomothermic is she hypothermic is she hypothermic okay is there any sign of deteriorating in the health of the mother can the mother go through labor if any of these parameters are becoming abnormal then we need to act fast okay intervene whether rehydrate the mother we rehydrate the mother adequately and plan for emergency cesarean section okay